Okay, hello everyone, this is our last video on our R tutorial. In this case, I'm going to show you a case study. The idea here is to show how to use the tools we studied in this tutorial in a more practical term. Um, I'm going to conduct an experiment and create a data frame exploring three different neural networks that have different learning algorithms. They are prop plus and they are prop minus. They both are the resilient backpropagation where with weight, ba uh, weight backtracking. So the plus has the weight backtracking, the minus doesn't have it. And we also have the SAG, which is the resilient backtrack backpropagation with weight backtracking back together with the smallest absolute gradient. So SAG for this is smallest absolute gradient. So three different methods, I'm not going to get into details of them, but they are just three different methods and I want to test if they have an impact in our performance. I want to check if the statistics, if the difference in the results are statistically significant. So our, our hypothesis is that different methods lead to different accuracy results. Um, the experiment those settings. I'm repeating the training and testing for each neural network 10 times. Uh, we can do a multi-class classification the iris data set. Very simple exercise. The code is for the experiment is here. I didn't, I'm not going to run now because it's going to take some time, but I already executed and loaded the data for us for simplicity. But in case you, I don't know, you want to extend this or just run to see how it goes, you can use this code. Remember to install the neural net package. Okay, so after everything, I calculate the neural nets and everything else, I create this n neural net study variable. Okay, so as I said in the second video of our tutorial, let's start looking at the box plots, getting an image of all, how things are going. So after experimentation, I'm going to get the data um, created for our analysis and explore the results. So yeah, box plot given the ggplot function of the data, I want to see the different algorithms in terms of accuracy. I'm coloring them with uh, given the different algorithm. So each box plot for, uh, is going to have a different color. Um, I'm also feeling here. I think there is some repetition in terms of code there, um, but I'm showing the gg the geom box plot, coloring again with the algorithm. I'm using the team minimal to reduce a little bit of noise in the in the image so that I, we can focus on the box plot and using colors that are blind friendly, blind color friendly. Um, I also changed the title, the, the x axis name and the y axis name, so algorithm and accuracy for each one. And I'm showing the box plot that you are seeing here now. Okay, so different algorithms are prop minus, are prop plus and SAG. Uh, the, ac the accuracy is shown here, for the, the R prop minus is the one with the highest standard deviation with the median different from the other two methods. So probably what we can expect in this case is that those two are very similar, so the difference is not really statistical dif uh, significance, but maybe for the R prop minus we can find that this difference is important, is a, a real difference. Okay, so um, to test if, to see if we can use the t-test, I'm going to analyze the density plots and the histogram plots all together um, using our data, using the accuracy in the x, um, uh, axis, looking at the density coloring by algorithm. Instagram um, said the, uh, the mean width as we did in the second video, so equals to two and sending the DST and separate the given algorithms and looking at everything else. So when we run this, we don't have a very nice picture, but we can see that, okay, for the R prop with it in pinkish, yeah, maybe the values are very well distributed. For the R prop plus, they are generally very high, almost one, but we have one execution that was not so good in terms of performance. And uh, for the SAG, most of the, the, the executions got a high number, almost close to one or one. So for, because of this doesn't look like a normal distribution, I'm going to use a different test, which is the Wilcox test. 
text test. Okay, so no method follows the normal distribution. Maybe the R prop gets closed. I'm not sure. Maybe I, I said it before, but maybe now I'm not so super sure about this anymore. Um, so because of that, we use non-parameter code thread um, analysis using the pairwise with Cox text test. And although the name says pairwise, if you don't set it to true, the test will not be pair paired. Okay, so keep that in mind when you use this test. And we have these different methods, so that's why we are multiple testing. So I'm using the function. If you want to get to know more about it, you just look on the documentation. I think we are in, already know how to do that. I'm testing the accuracies given the algorithms, and I don't want to be paired, so I set it to false. So in this case, we have different p-values, one for each pair of algorithms. R prop minus, R prop plus, uh, p-value is high, so the difference is not statistically um, significant, but for maybe for the SAG and R prop minus, yeah, we found the p-value to be small enough. So we see we can claim that the difference is important and substantial. So yeah. The, so for this experiment it was very interesting because for different for two, two type of methods like R pop plus and minus, um, we didn't get much information, R pop plus and SAG, but for the R pop minus and SAG we found some inter interesting result that we could already see somewhat in the box plot here. Okay, so this is the end of the case study. I hope it was useful for you and thank you very much for your attention.